Coping with COVID and In It Together SC present Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina and DHEX Division of Diabetes and Heart Disease Management. Coping, Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Hey there, happy Wednesday. It is Wellness Wednesday. And as you heard, and it together, I see in the Diabetes Action Council presents Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. Today, we're celebrating World Music Month and Black Music Month. We'll have a conversation about music as a healer. Join guitarist, band leader, Terrence Young, also singer, songwriter, and performer, Tiffany J. Radio personality, BZ Baby will join us and epidemiologist, Dr. Jane Kelly. All of them will join our conversation conversation about music as a healer. Thank you all so much for joining us today on Wellness Wednesday. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All of that and so much more coming up next on Wellness Wednesday. But first, your COVID community updates. Governor Henry McMaster will defend his seat against Joe Cunningham in November. The South Carolina primaries elected Cunningham over Mia McLeod, the first African-American female to run for the top spot in South Carolina. In other results, Palmetto State Teachers Association Executive Director Kathy Mattis and conservative think tank CEO Ellen Weaver made the runoff for South Carolina State Education Superintendent seat. The Democratic nominee is still up for grabs, Lisa Ellis, who's founder of the Teacher Advocate Group SC for Ed, who had a clear lead, is in a runoff today against former Anderson County School District 4 Superintendent Gary Burgess. Now, in other races, incumbents Attorney General Alan Wilson, Department of Agriculture Commissioner Hugh Weathers, and Secretary of State Mark Hammond all kept their spots, along with Richland County Councilman Paul Livingston, Congressman Jim Clyburn, and State Representative Lonnie Hosey, Chris Hart, and Justin Bamberg. A few runoffs to note in the race for U.S. House District Seat 70, Wendy Brawley and Jermaine Johnson will face a runoff. And also for Richland County Council, neither Norman Jackson nor Shaquise Newman got over 50 percent of the vote. So it's back in the polls for them in the next two weeks. Now, the heat is a big story across the country with record-breaking triple-digit temperatures. Authorities are reminding people how to handle the heat. Basically, it's stay out of it. Uh, you can see the tips on the screen there. Schedule frequent rest breaks in shaded or air-conditioned environments. Drink plenty of fluids. Water is preferred. Stay inside where it's air conditioning. Stay out of the sun and check up on relatives and neighbors. Also, please never, ever leave young children or pets unattended in vehicles under any circumstances. Now, if you work outside or spend a lot of time outside, when possible, schedule strenuous activities to early morning or evening. Schedule frequent rest breaks in shaded or air conditioned environments and know the signs and symptoms of heat exhaustion and heat stroke. It is an emergency if someone suffers heat stroke. So please call 911 immediately if you think that someone is suffering from a heat stroke. SCD Heck has your most up-to-date list of time, states, and location for COVID testing in and around South Carolina. Visit scdheck.gov for more information. Now, throughout the show, you will see uh, the scroll listed at the bottom of the screen right now that will have all types of information about COVID testing, vaccination information. Uh, and again, of course, you can visit scdheck.gov. Also, don't forget, you can still get your five free rapid tests by logging on to covidtest.gov. COVID vaccines are available for VA, for veterans at the VA. Several retail outlets are offering COVID vaccinations, including Kroger, CVS, and Walgreens. The Comet Bus System also has COVID vaccines on Tuesday through Thursday from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. And you can also catch the Comet to get a free ride to get your vaccination. All you have to do is show your appointment card. Now, online registration for anyone having a challenge scheduling their COVID vaccination or testing appointment is available at Get Set Up. And then, of course, if you are having some uh, financial difficulties, there are several resources available, including uh, the FEMA COVID funeral reimbursement. If you lost a loved one due to COVID, contact the folks at FEMA and uh, talk about how you can get reimbursement for funeral expenses. Now, SC Bar Association and SC Legal Services has a toll-free number and website for rental and mortgage help. Lexington County's Bill Assistance Program is still available, and SC Housing and Dominion Energy has a rental and bill assistance program also. Now, 
if you or someone you know is having a challenge coping with COVID or coping in general, please know that the Department of Mental Health has a 24-hour assistance line that they can call. That information is also on the screen. You are watching Coping with COVID from uh, In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council. We are streaming live on the In It Together Facebook page. Please go over there, hit like and share and follow and get updates as to not only when we go live, but all of the great information on the In It Together website and Facebook page. Now, you can find out about getting a diabetes prevention program. They've got them in person and also virtual. You can also take a test to see if you're at risk for diabetes. So many resources available on that In It Together Facebook page and website. We're also streaming live on the TaylorMade production page on Facebook. We uh, That's the home of Coping with COVID. Please go over there, hit like and share and follow. Get notifications as to when we go live Wednesday, Thursday and Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and also get all of your COVID related updates. We're also streaming live on our YouTube channel. Please go over there and hit like and share and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now there we have two plus years of content, information, interviews and all types of resources sources. We also on Instagram and also on Twitter. In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. And today we are talking about music as a healer. Uh, state, uh, former state epidemiologist, uh, Linda, um, not Linda, Lord have mercy, Jane Kelly joins us today. She has uh, agreed to join us today to talk about music as a healer. Dr. Jane, thank you so much for joining us today. I just had a, a brain uh, fart there. <laughs> 104 degrees in the shade. That's why I'm dressed the way I am. I was just outdoors. So maybe, maybe the heat is getting to you a little bit. <laughs> it, could be. it certainly could be. Well, listen, we thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Like I said, it's World Music Month and Black Music Month. And uh, we decided uh, at DHEC to have a conversation about music as a healer. And I want to know from you, is, is that true? Is that just something in our minds or is that um, medically proven? It is medically proven. Um, among the many different ways that that's been demonstrated is not just behaviorally, but something using MRI scans, you know, that's a machine that they sometimes use in, in more sophisticated than an x-ray or a CAT scan, because it can actually look at the function of your brain. It can look at what parts of your brain light up when you do different things. So for example, they use an MRI to look for uh, where someone might have had a stroke in an area of the brain, but they've done studies with music and different areas of the brain light up in the machine when you're lying in the machine, depending wow. on the type of music that's being played. So some of the things that music can do is bring out emotions like nostalgia, listening to music that's from, from your youth, from your childhood, it brings out different memories. Uh, but it also can help your brain function more in certain cognitive tasks, you know, like thinking through tasks. So it's been a useful therapy for people who have had strokes, people who have early onset dementia or Parkinson's, yeah. because it will help to sort of reset those areas of the brain. So absolutely, there is, you know, solid evidence that music affects the function of your brain and you can use it in a very positive fashion. Wow. Dr. Jane uh, Kelly joins us. She is the former assistant epidemiologist with the state of South Carolina. She's currently uh, doing some work with the uh, College of Charleston and will get ready to do some work with Emory University. You told me that. I don't know if that's a secret, but I just mentioned it. So <laughs> thank you again so much for joining us. Now, you know, here uh, on Wellness Wednesday, we talk a lot about high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes. Are there any studies that show, Dr. Kelly, that um, those types of comorbidities are also affected, whether negatively or positively, because of music? Yeah, definitely there are studies with regards to high blood pressure or hypertension. If the person is listening to calming music, um, I think that's traditionally been more classical music, but I would think any kind of calming music lowers blood pressure. And wow. so, yeah, and, and that makes sense to me because music also helps to re, um, relieve anxiety, 
relieve stress. It takes your focus elsewhere. So if you're stressed out about something, worried about something, by refocusing your mind, it's almost like biofeedback that you refocus your whole body. So definitely music can help to lower blood pressure. And I would, I think there, I don't know of any studies demonstrating improvement in blood glucose with diabetes, but I do know of studies with um, music helping people with moving more, you know, with physical activity, whether that's, you know, obviously dancing to music, but also just walking that people sustain a pace longer, they walk longer, or they jog longer, if they're listening to music. Right. Well, you know, it's funny, uh, you mentioned that because when I, <laughs> when I was in high school, I got a scholarship to go to, um, USC had a pre-health career development program. Now I had no uh, desire or interest <laughs> in going into medicine, but I, I had said maybe I could do musical therapy. Mm -hmm. Now, then that wasn't a thing. But right. now musical therapy is a verified um, practice type of practice. Oh, absolutely. Especially a lot more recent work done with people who are who have dementia or early onset Alzheimer's disease, um, because that can be a really distressing condition, not only you know, the loss of memory, but some people get really depressed and tearful when they have conditions like that. Same thing with people who are older adults who may have had a stroke, they can get tearful. Listening to music though, uses a different part of your brain. And often even people who can't speak because of a stroke can sing. They can oh sing. My goodness. And there's been a lot of research in rehab for uh, older adults having various medical problems, using medicine, using music as medicine for rehab. But of course, music has uh, positive effects for everyone at all ages. And you know, they even use music to calm animals. You know, you've heard the phrase music, how does it go? Music soothes. Soothes the savage beast, I think, yeah. There is true evidence for that. You know, I know people who work in zoos who talk about using music to help calm an animal as you're introducing them to a new environment. So it's deep. It's deep in our biology. Well, you know, it's so funny because you can see children um, of all ages, all ethnicities, all races, and then music come on and they're all moving and grooving yeah. in their own way. So I know for me, um, the, one of the reasons why I chose to go into radio broadcasting is because I felt like music was such a unifier. You know, we can all be listening to the same piece of music and have evoke and it evoke a different emotion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there a culture in the world that doesn't have music? I don't think so. Right. Right. Danielle Lake says there's truth to music as medicine. Hey, thank you so much, Danielle, for joining us. Please and post and share this information out so we can get the message to the masses. We're talking about music as a healer. I'm Trey Taylor. Dr. Jane Kelly joins us. She is a physician and epidemiologist, and you're listening to Wellness Wednesday from In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina. Have you ever used music, Dr. Kelly, in your practice? That's... That's an interesting question. Uh, and yes, but maybe not, usually more in the context of encouraging physical activity mm -hmm. and getting people to, to join in activities that involve music. But I've been thinking more and more about that aspect of music calming people and relieving anxiety. I think that is an underused modality. Yeah, I know that uh, oftentimes surgeons will use it when they are performing yeah. surgery. Oh yeah, and I think that comes as a surprise to people because they're thinking, wait a minute, I don't want my surgeon distracted <laughs> with the music. No, it's background, it's, it's almost zen that yeah. it's coming to have that, that background noise to kind of get you, you know, they're, a surgeon is hyper-focused on what they're doing. The, the music is background. Yeah. I think that could be true for so many of us doing doing things that would give us that hyper focus is really helpful. Yeah. I know for me, um, I and mean, I've been in environments and I'm I'm one of those people, I've always got music around me, some kind of music, and I like everything from Biggie to Bach, you know. So, but I have been in meetings 
where I need some music in the background, but then it's distracting to someone else, you know, but it's so important. Music is so important for me in my daily environment. It really varies, doesn't it? I mean, people have to seek out what works for them and what music works for them. Yeah. But I also think about children with autism or who are on the spectrum mm. and you know, that they can get very upset um, by, by different stimuli. But music, again, music is calming for most of them. Yeah. So uh, music is good. Um, and you, you have, uh, as you said, prescribed, so to speak, or suggested to mm -hmm. your patients that maybe music can help you dot, dot, dot. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Jane Kelly is a uh, epidemiologist and a physician. She's uh, work, working with the College of Charleston and will be working with uh, Emory University very soon. And uh, she has joined us today to have a conversation about music as a healer. Coming up, we're going to talk to two musicians who give their take on how music has helped them in their profession. Popular guitarist band leader Terrence Young joins us along with singer, songwriter, and performer Tiffany J. They join us next along with Dr. Jane Kelly on Wellness Wednesday from In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council. I'm Trey Taylor. Thanks, Dr. Kelly. Hello, I'm Carolyn Sawyer, an entrepreneur and caregiver. Part of taking care of your health is knowing if you're at risk of type 2 diabetes. Pre-diabetes is serious and puts you at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. Up to 90% of South Carolinians who have it don't know they have it. Visit inittogethersc.org. Take an online test to find out your risk and join a diabetes prevention program. This message brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of SC. The comment. In it together, SC and the Diabetes Action Council present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. Today we celebrate World Music Month and Black Music Month with a conversation about music as a healer. Terrence Young is a popular guitarist and multi <coughs> band leader, uh, and with music that has been heard globally. And Tiffany J is a singer, songwriter, and recording artist. They both join us today on Coping with Trey Taylor. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I appreciate you. No, thank, thank you. For you. Having us. Uh, Terrence, I don't see you with your guitar. I thought you were going to bless us with a song today. <laughs> Here's the guitar here. Oh, okay. well, well, if you can play that, then you're amazing. You're even more amazing than we ever thought. Yeah, let, let me ask you both, and, and you heard what uh, Dr. Kelly said, and we're going to bring her up in a little bit, but how did each of you become interested in music? Tiffany, you start. Um, I think it was just embedded into me. My, my mom is a singer. Um, and just having roots in the church is probably where I first fell in love with music. So it was something I didn't really choose. I would say it chose me. So um, as I, I've grown, music has always been that safe space for me. So, yeah. Right. You say safe space. And I want to get into that before I, I go to uh, Terrence. What did that what does that mean to you, your safe space? Well, I think one of my favorite uh, quotes about music comes from Jimi Hendrix when he says music is a safe high. Yeah, and oh, um, yeah. I know I've suffered with uh, depression and anxiety before. And particularly with COVID at the beginning of the pandemic, music was the thing that I turned to to ease the stress of uh business shutting down and all that kind of thing it allows you to escape reality but for just that moment you can take your mind to a whole nother place so yeah. for me um it's a coping tool that i use to escape whatever realities that might be weighing heavy on me was it your own music that helped you or did you listen to other kind of music both um so my own music most of the time is birth as a healing mechanism, but by the time it's released into the atmosphere, it's used for healing for other people. Mm -hmm. um, so I have my go-tos. I like uh, Neo Soul. It kind of depends on my mood. When I work, I like to have my Alexa playing music. I work a lot to Jill Scott and Kirk Franklin. Yeah. Um, but it, it just kind of depends. So sometimes I'll listen to my own music, but for my healing, I, I typically turn to other people. But I write and create <coughs> as a healing mechanism, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, yeah. I, well, when after we uh, asked uh, Terrence the same question, I want to get Dr. Kelly back up here to kind of speak to what you were saying. So, Terrence, tell us how you became interested in music and why the guitar. Oh, hello. You hear me? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it went out. But uh, yeah, um, I came up in a family of musicians. My all my uncles were musicians. They were in the gospel music quartet uh, music. So. All of my family did, all of my uncles, and I, they were my motivators. They're who I looked up to, they're who raised me. So that's what um, inspired me to be a musician. And why the guitar? Why the guitar? Um, my uncle, Sam Williams, he uh, plays with a group called Tommy Ellison and the Singing Stars. He, he recorded a song called Yes, Jesus Loves Me. Mm. And that's the first time I heard a song that actually brought tears in my eyes. I was like, mm. why am I? I was a young dude, young guy, and I got emotion when I heard the song. I was like, wow, this can actually touch people without actually words. So that 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 inspired me. Wow. Now, yeah. um, so why then did both of you go from enjoying music to actually making it a profession, Tiffany? Um, I guess kind of piggybacking what I've said, uh, I short stories so at 12 i actually com uh, attempted to commit suicide but at 14 i got into a place where i uh used artistic expression in a lot so because i bottled everything in i didn't really express myself prior to so at 14 was when i first began writing songs um and then i be became a poet after i became a songwriter however just the release of writing things uh they kind of turned out to be good so i began to you know take those to another level to where i package them and, and um release them to the world as far as my music is concerned it was just something that i had a passion for that didn't feel like work however it became attractive to uh consumers and it just seemed like it was a a good idea to take it seriously and in a professional manner Right. Terrence, you said that you saw your family members uh, making music a profession. So is, was that an additional um, motivation for you to say, not only can I play, but I can make this money, money doing this. This, <laughs> this is a career. You know what I mean? This is a career. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, um, I wasn't blessed with the best singing voice. <laughs> so um, but uh, when I saw my uncle play guitar, I heard him play guitar and see that he touched people doing it and i always wanted to play guitar so that motivated me to play guitar and i just played it because i loved it and then just so happened somebody said terrence you know i could actually listen to you all day and that was like hmm so i recorded my first record um in 2002 i think it was and the rest is history yeah, we're talking to Terrence Young and Tiffany J, yeah. uh, who are performers, singers. Tiffany is singer songwriter. Terrence is a, a world renowned guitarist and band leader. And we're talking about how music heals. In it together, SC and the Diabetes Action Council present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. Um, have and you know, Tiffany, you also sing in church as opposed to on stages. So, I, I mean, I think we all know there is a direct correlation to music and spirituality and a healing, a feeling as far as church is concerned. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So um, kind of relating to Terrence and his uncle, one of the things that attracted me early on um, as far as inspiration to be a singer was how congregants would flock to my mom after church saying she blessed them with whatever she delivered in the, in the ministry. Um, I think today when we hear people say, you know, R&B, this ain't real R&B no more. I think it's because of lack of influence from the church. Um, we are in raised in the church how we used to be. And I know a lot of our classic R&B soul artists have that gospel roots. And you can hear the influence through that true R&B music. And I think that's what's missing from today's R&B artists, they aren't uprooted in the church. So um, I know as this is Black Music Month and Black people for the most part are in touch with their soul and our soul kind of starts with our spirituality, in my yeah. opinion. 
you know, and, and Terrence, I, I said Tiffany specifically, you know, plays in church, but so do you. You play, you do, you play your guitar <laughs> in church, as and and just like Tiffany, and on stages. Do you see a difference in people's reaction to your music in church on Sunday and on Saturday night? I actually see the same reaction in a different way. Yeah. Um, Saturday nights is more, uh, you know. Oh, he sounds good. I, I can feel what he's playing. And in church, it's like I can feel the spirit of the Lord, you know, around the room when I'm playing like a hymn on the guitar. So it's kind of they both feel, but in a, in a different way. Right. We, uh, yeah. of course, are, are looking a little bit at um, uh, Terrence, Terrence's performance. If we can uh, bring up the volume, we can listen to a little bit. In it together, SC and the Diabetes Action Council present Wellness Wednesday here on our Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. That was uh, Terrence Young, the Terrence Young Experience. Tiffany J uh, joins us also. And uh, we're going to bring in uh, Dr. Jane Kelly, a uh, former assistant epidemiologist with uh, SCDHEC. Uh, Dr. Kelly, thank you for joining us. You heard both Tiffany and Terrence mention that um, not only did music, uh, and especially in Tiffany's case, help her through some tough times as a child, she used that same coping mechanism, mechanism, so to speak, to end up being a profession. I know that's such a wonderful story. Yeah, is that common? Is that typical to use the same thing to, you know, that heals you to save you, I guess, or, mm -hmm. you know, either as a profession? I guess I would think maybe that would have been her safe space that she kept safe, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think also that some of your viewers might be thinking, well, I don't, I don't play the guitar or I don't have a good enough singing voice, but you know, you can always make music. You can always make music with your voice or with drumming. And I know drumming it means a lot to a lot of people with evoking a lot of emotion. It's, it's physical, it stimulates dopamine, you know, those brain chemicals that, that help you with depression or anger, help you with those negative emotions. So certainly, you know, one doesn't need to be a professional performer to, uh, to make one's own music. But I suspect that's not an uncommon story. People, yeah. you know, feeling pain and finding an outlet in music. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, guys, in your opinion, uh, for you, Tiffany, again, and just like I just asked Terrence, it, on sat whether it's Saturday night or Sunday morning, do you think music helps or heals or affects those that you specifically interact with? Uh, most definitely. Uh, people are always, the comments are pretty consistent with, it touched me. Um, so I think overall, that's always my goal to have people um, experience my music in a way that they are able to relate to it and get soulful nourishment, if you know, if I could say that. Um, but people are always the responses are kind of the same for me on Saturday. I like that analogy, Saturday night, Sunday morning. <laughs> but um, it's it's always like it touched me, and you know, at the end of the day, that's my goal. Yeah, yeah. Let's hear a little bit of Tiffany. This is her a tiny desk concert. That's Tiffany J. We're talking about music as a healer in it together. SC and the Diabetes Action Council present Wellness <laughs> Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. I'm Trey Taylor, Tiffany J, Terrence Young, Dr. Jane Kelly uh, join us. Uh, so why did you guys, both of you decide, was it was it ever a decision for you, either church or or, or jazz and your and your instances? Well, both of your instances. Was it always gonna be both? I want to follow Mr. Terrence. I want him to ask first. <laughs> uh, 
uh, I plead the fifth. No, I'm just kidding. No, it was um, it was first gospel. It was first gospel, and then um, I then I then branched out to jazz because I learned music as a spirit. As long as it's positive and you're touching people, and believe it or not, I use it as a healing for myself. Like a lot of times, folks say when I'm playing, I have my eyes closed, and I'm you know a lot of times I'm not even there because I'm right. I'm playing out stress that I've been through through the week being a father and all that stuff. So I have a lot of stuff I go through that I decompress when I play as well. Is so, there um, any, do you have a favorite kind of music, Terrence, that helps you de-stress? Okay, for genre of music? Or or artist, genre, type, yeah. Uh, gospel is definitely my favorite. That's definitely my favorite. Um, um, I love playing Total Praise, um, the song more than anything, um, the gospel song. Um, that's my favorite. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do either of you have any specific stories that you can share about how if someone coming up to you? I know Tiffany, you said a little bit that people always say, "I t I heard, I felt that I, you know." But has there any has there been any specific story where somebody <laughs> said you played boom, 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 and I was going through this and you helped me? Dot, dot, dot. Either of you? Um, actually, yeah, and it's it's. I don't want to say it's funny because I'm I've already kind of touched on it, but um, when I first began as a solo artist, because I, I started in a gospel group myself, um, but when I branched out as a solo artist, one of my second single was called "Beauty You Are," and I actually had a young lady come to me, not from a live performance, but from the actual record that was had a friend attempting to commit suicide and she shared with me the song saved her in the moment so all together my persona really kind of um is an advocate for positive mental health and and self-esteem and confidence so that type of thing is always rewarding for me um but other than that i've had people say i came to your show and you know i was dealing with this before i came but i feel better you know it ain't that big of a deal anymore because i have relaxed <laughs> and, and that kind of thing so yeah i have a couple stories that i could could think about yeah what well, terrence you said you also have some i have quite a few <laughs> um one incident i was in greenville south Carolina. I, I was at a church anniversary a choir anniversary so i ministered uh two songs and um just instrumental and when I opened my eyes, the entire church was laid out in the oh, spirit. Wow. wow. And I was, you know, I'm not really a talker, you know, <laughs> minister of mouth. So I didn't know what to do because right. the entire church was in worship and crying and everywhere. Wow. And the pastor of the church saw me. So he came up and kind of took control and then called the altar call right. to the folks, you know, and I didn't even, it's like, I was just closing my eyes. And then when I opened my eyes, that entire church was in worship that happened quite a few times as a matter of fact terrence i want I, I want to hear another story but before you say that i want to ask you were you surprised because there were no vocals because it was just instrumental yes mm -hmm. yes very surprised and i and that's me playing from my heart so you never know how god works through you yeah to reach other people so um that was a that was a, an experience yeah some other yes. stories you want to share you say you got a million of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i had uh, um twice i had um two ladies they both passed away they were dealing with um, breast cancer but one of the last requests was to see me live in concert oh wow so one was in columbia and the other one was in i want to say durham or raleigh north carolina and the last request was to see me live in concert that's wow. huge so, yeah that was huge and they that's both huge deceased now but um that was touching not a steak dinner but to yeah hear you. yeah just to hear me you know and this wasn't a gospel concert it was literally a jazz concert and the request was to hear me live yeah before they yeah yeah dr jane i want to bring you in here because we we talked a little bit with terrence about and tiffany i saw her shaking her head i i guess i think we probably think more of uh vocal music being um impactful because we can hear the lyrics we can relate to what's being sung or said but you know in terrence's case as a instrumentalist his guitar is his voice you know and as he said it has been made you know such a major impact is there a correlation to um 
instrumental music as opposed to vocal music? So, you know, this is a good time to talk about the healing power of tears. So certainly people listen to lyrics and lyrics have their, their own messages, but the, the sort of emotional movement that goes with music, with it, whether lyrics or no lyrics, uh, it, it goes straight to your, you know, your primitive brain, your emotional yeah. brain. And tears are not always a bad thing. Sometimes we have, are holding so many emotions inside that music is that key in the lock that opens the gates and all those emotions flood out. And those tears can be healing. It, it's yeah. that, it's that managing to access your really deepest, deepest part of your brain where things you, maybe you can close down for a long time. It's like I think about the women you know, dying with breast cancer and you know, what was it that they wanted out of that experience? You know, they, they wanted something that touched them really deeply that you can't get to easily. The music allows you to get there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We're talking to that's Dr. Jane Kelly. She is a former assistant epidemiologist with a SCD HEC. She's working now with the College of Charleston and Emory University. Tiffany J is a singer songwriter and also a Terrence Young, who is a, a world renowned guitarist and band leader. Uh, what is your opinion, Tiffany, of music today? Gospel, jazz and popular music. Uh, Beezy Baby is going to join us in the next segment. And uh, she had some interesting things to say. But but what do you what is what are your thoughts about music today as it relates to how people are reacting to it whether it be positive or negative so i i strongly believe in that saying that art imitates life and i i believe that the music today imitates what today's mainstream culture values or feels is worthy um sometimes it's hard to because we have generations that are still here, but they aren't the focal generation of today who don't value what is being put into the music created. However, it's imitating whatever the past generation felt was too strict to be passed down to the generation below them. So we are dealing with, I think, the way we are brought up and the values that we pass on and what we choose not to pass on. Cause I, I just believe that the, the music today is just imitating what people do today. And I can't fault the um, artist for creating music that people can relate to. Cause I think that in itself is a goal. Yeah. Uh, Tasha Hutchison says, uh, tears of joy are a real thing. Central Thomas says, uh, Tiffany, uh, that's that's a wise view. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Please post and share this uh, broadcast out so we can get the message to the masses. We're talking about music as a healer. What about you, uh, Terrence? You primarily do gospel and jazz. You do do some popular music. But do you have an opinion as a father and a musician of music today and how it affects <laughs> young people and all people because all of it's not oh. great That's true. <laughs> and, you know, let, let me just throw in this uh -huh. because to, to tiffany's point yes it is an expression of what you're going through whether that's gang banging or yeah. <laughs> love yeah. it you know what i mean but Absolutely. then yeah but but how does that then your opinion terrence affect or infect uh, uh, this this generation well <sighs> For the past 20 years, I've been doing music in schools. I'm sure you're familiar with some of the work I've done. And I found out kids, uh, they if they hadn't been exposed to it, they don't know it. Um, I did a concert at C.A. Johnson High School a couple weeks ago. And I did some Motown songs, jazz versions, and they loved it. They, they It's just, they're just not exposed to it. So yeah. whatever, you know, whatever you feed the kids, they're going to eat it. It's just... Yeah. You know, back in the day when we were younger, we got in the car, we listened to what mom and dad listened to. Yes. But yeah, but now the kids got their own thing going on. But I make sure my daughter, you know, my daughters, they listen to the Earth When the Fires, or, you know, the Michael Jackson's and things of that nature. I think and even I did at elementary schools, the kids actually love the, the music. It's just that some of them not exposed to it. So Yeah. That's my that's my take on it. Yeah. Do you think people's reaction to music has changed over time? Yes, I think so, because I think today's music has no substance, mm. for one. Um, and 
That's my view. It just has no substance. <laughs> it's, just, it's just people just doing music. Singers are getting hired because of the way they look, the way they dress, and there's no substance in a beat as opposed of the real music back in the days when it was it was people who can really sing and who, who can really write and was writing about something for real and about love and, and relationships and things of that nature. I, I just, it's definitely a difference. Yeah. So. Uh, Tip, Tiffany, what do you think? <laughs> I, I agree. Um, like today, we don't value, like you said, a lot of the music of the past was about love. We don't see people yeah, falling yeah. in love anymore. Like yeah. marriage isn't even a thing that people think about. And it's, it's just who you with today and who you're going to be with next week. So yeah. the values are different. Um, but I, I'm not a huge fan of today's music. Um, I like old school stuff. So, yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Kelly, what do you like to listen to? You know, I'm just so out of touch with today's music. <laughs> sitting here in my living room i think you can see in the background our cd collection we've got we've, we've got a real first of all you got a cd collection yeah <laughs> that good? she um, missed out on nothing uh well but the very fact that you have a cd collection yeah you know, it, this is a very different way of listening to music right kids today they're it's not a communal activity right. everybody's got earbuds they're listening to their own spotify thing yeah. Yeah. so you're not sharing with other right. the way that that we did, um, right. you know, you don't go to a concert. Well, I guess people do go to a concert, but for you know, for hundreds, for thousands of years, the way people listened to music was in a group. You know that you you heard music live, and it really has radically changed. Everybody can do their own thing, and it's a little bit isolating. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Jane Kelly, uh, assistant uh, epidemiologist with the state of South Carolina. She's uh, currently working with the College of Charleston and Emory University, singer-songwriter Tiffany J. Uh, you can uh, check out her upcoming concerts and all of her music. Tiffany, tell us quickly uh, where we can see you next. So this is actually my first concert since COVID started. I haven't done a full concert since the pandemic came. So July 22nd, um, I'm having a full concert at the main course and tickets are available on my website, imtiffanyj.com. Awesome. And, and Terrence, we can see you everywhere all the time. When's your next gig? <laughs> everywhere all the time, no. <laughs> uh, the next show in Columbia will be at the main course as well on Sunday, July 3rd, 7 p.m. And tickets are available, as you can see online. A nice smooth jazz. Get you. Awesome. Uh, grown, just all grown folks music. All grown folks' music. Yeah, uh, Josephine yeah. says exposure is everything. She said her 17-year-old's playlist consists of old school, like Frankie Beverly, Earth, Wind & Fire, and her favorite is Bobby Womack. Wow, now that's a 17-year-old. Yeah. yeah, that's great music. And I, I yes. do think we should continue to share good music, positive music, positive vibes, because uh, as we have talked about and heard today, music definitely can make a positive influence on each of our lives. Uh, and we appreciate what each of you bring to that party. Terrence Young, Tiffany J, and Dr. Jane Kelly, thank you guys so much for joining us today on Coping with COVID. Coming up next, the DJ's perspective. We're gonna talk to BZ Baby next on Wellness Wednesday from In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council. I'm Trey Taylor. Hi, I'm Mr. Deputy Addy Perez with the Richland County Sheriff's Department Community Action Team. As a mother, I know it's important to take care of my health for those I care about. Part of doing that is knowing my risk for developing type 2 diabetes. So if I was you, I'd take the opportunity to visit inittogethersc.org and take an online test to find out if you have prediabetes. Again, the website is inittogethersc.org. This message is brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina. Computers, they're a part of our everyday life. But when they're not working, they're an everyday problem. So call Computers Unique, your everyday solution. 803-351-5821. Is your computer running slow? Won't turn on? Do you need a screen replaced? Or maybe you just need another computer? Well, Computers Unique is your one-stop shop for all your computer needs. They have a wide variety of new and pre-owned PCs, Macs, and tablets. So call Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall. 803-351-5821. 803-351. 
Peck, and it together, SC and the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Thank you again for joining us. As you heard, we are celebrating both World Music Month and also Black Music Month, which is happening this month, the month of June, and uh, talking about how music heals. We heard from musicians Tiffany J and uh, Terrence Young earlier. And now we're going to hear from a DJ, someone who works with music every single day. Beezy Baby, Beezy Baby joins us. She is an award-winning uh, radio host, having worked in both Charlotte, North Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, and also she's worked red carpets all over the world for BET and other entities. The two-time author is uh, an accomplished professional after a rough start including prison, abandonment, and also um, foster care. But she's here with us today to talk about how music heals and also check out a couple of her, her books because uh, they're fascinating reads about how she went came went through adversity and came out on top. BZ, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you, beautiful. Thank you so much for having me as a guest on your platform, Trey. I'm blessed to be here. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm blessed that you're sharing with us because you've got uh, such an interesting perspective, not only from the radio DJ, the radio announcer standpoint, but even from your background of having undergone so much trauma early on. And, you know, I think we know that music, I know for me, I got into the business because of the um, unifyingness, if that's a word, the uni how, what, how music unifies you. What was it for you? Um, I think initially it wasn't more than I needed a job and I wanted to do <laughs> something that was that I felt like God was instructing me to do. Um, yeah. so I really just led, you know, what I felt like was my plan um, by God to get to radio. But once I got there, I think what kept me there and what keeps me there today is the fact that radio is an avenue to touch a lot of people. And yeah. we know that music can be uh, a lot of different things. So I like to say that radio personalities are like the magic between the music. So I just feel like it, it, it's a lot of power there and um, a lot of opportunity to impact people in a great way. Yeah. So tell us about how you think the music impacts people. I mean, and, and you've you worked in, you know, you, very, you, you, um, I mean, just I think about myself, like when I'm down in the dump or I'm having a bad day or I'm going through a rough time and I play a good song, I, it can just turn my attitude around. Or if yeah. I'm in need of some spiritual fulfillment and, you know, churches until Sunday, I can go to YouTube <laughs> for a sermon or I can turn on one of my favorite gospel songs and it just makes me feel like, you know, God is there with me in that moment. So I just think that um, music has a power. It can, it can turn things, you know positive or negative mm -hmm. you know we hear a lot of music that is um I, i'll say not so positive we're talking about <laughs> things that don't highlight the best parts of us right and i right. think that that can also be uh leading in in a negative way so i just think we have to be careful with what we feed ourselves and what we digest in it together, SD and the Diabetes Action Council presents Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. BZ Baby joins us. She is uh, currently with KISS FM in Columbia, South Carolina. She does middays, but she has worked at many other radio stations and also graced the red carpet for BET all over the world. We're talking about how music heals. And I'm glad you mentioned, BZ, that you have used it personally to uplift you because I was going to ask you, you know, having gone through uh, abandonment, prison and, and so many other things in foster care, even as a young person, did you connect with music to help you through those hard times? Oddly enough, I did. Of course, um, well, when I was younger, I didn't really have a solid relationship with Christ. I honestly didn't even believe in God. So mm -hmm. as a youth, I kind of felt like because of my circumstances and the things that I had gone, I had gone through the trauma um, that I had experienced, there couldn't be a God because what kind of God would allow those types of things to happen right, to me? Right. But um, I now can reflect back to those teenage years and think that even back then, music and God through music was kind of turning things around. So I remember the first, um, I won't say gospel because it wasn't gospel, but the first <laughs> hip hop song that was God filled that touched me was DMX. Wow. Oddly enough, I was walking from 
a street corner where I was selling drugs, listening to the DMX album, and DMX's prayer came on after a song that I was listening to of his. And I just listened to it because back then, you know, it was CDs and you don't want to pull the CD player out and push the right. button. So I just let it ride. And um, I remember feeling something. And, you know, now I would say maybe that's the Holy Spirit, right? But back then I didn't know what it was. And I was just like, wow, that, that was good. That felt good. <laughs> um, so even back then, I think music was planting a seed in me that would grow decades later into helping me, you know, become the woman that I am today. Well, I want to piggyback on your DMX story because, you know, we know that music, and you said this earlier, makes us feel good. But sometimes it takes us to a, a bad place also, whether it's a memory that, you know, we associate with a piece of music or just music with negative lyrics. And you worked in a hip hop radio before. So what are your thoughts about how people react to music specifically hip hop music that talks a lot sometimes a lot gang banging and you know mugging and killing and fighting and all kind of negative stuff well i think music is an outlet and artists express themselves through their art and so music being the art of an entertainer or or a rapper or r&b artist or rock star um hip hop is not the only music that highlights negativity. And I think we get a bad rap because yeah. if you listen to some rock and roll lyrics, like things are happening. Um, yeah. Rock and roll stars are biting off birds heads on you know, stage. <laughs> and so it's not just hip hop, but You're I right. do think because, because our culture and a lot of us have experienced some traumatic things and we have endured some things that not everybody has endured because we know culturally and over history, we've not always had the um, the advantage that other cultures or other eth ethnicities mm -hmm. have had or nationalities have had. So I think what we do as hip hop artists um, is share our experiences. So if our experiences are that of um, murder or um, trying to get a dollar because we've grown up in these um, impoverished circumstances or, you know, sex, I mean, you're going to talk yeah. about what your life yeah. experience is. Yeah. I don't think that all music is that, but it's definitely expressive. So I think artists that you hear talking about violence have experienced violence and that is real to them. It's not that they're promoting it. It's that they're expressing it. Yeah, we're talking to Beezy, baby. We are talking about how music heals as we uh, commemorate Black Music Month, World Music Month, in it together, SC and the Diabetes Action Council presents Wellness Wednesday, every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. I want to ask you a couple of more questions. I know uh, that you've got to go to work today, but um, are there any personal stories you can share uh, about how music has affected someone while you were on the air? Someone called you back or, or, or you saw someone out in the street that said, man, something you played or something you said really affected me. Um, well, Father's Day coming up. And I remember one day, shout out to Chris Connors, my PD of Kiss, but he was my PD a few years ago at a different station. And um, it was Father's Day. And Chris would just he would give me a little room sometimes to play songs that I wanted to play. And I played Dance With My Father by Luther Vandross because yeah. it was Father's Day and I was missing my dad. And as I played it, the phone started ringing and so many people were just calling up in tears, thanking me for playing that because they too wanted to reflect on the time with their father. So um, that's one time I'll say in specific that I recall. I think um, also a big when you were talking, the memory that flashed in my head was when DMX came to the Township Auditorium right here in Columbia and performed live, slipping. And as he performed, he climbed up on um, one of the banisters there and continued to sing the hook and began to cry while mm. singing the song. And it was very, it invited us in to yeah. how troublesome his addiction has been and yeah. how troublesome his life has been and how he really was at war with himself um throughout the years and just showed us how that song was so much more than a song to him so that was um definitely a memory for me that i shared with thousands at the township that day that's so good because i think sometimes as listeners we separate the music from the artists and we don't realize they're people too they're experiencing too and it is part of their life their experience because they're singing writing performing from a personal place yeah and we yeah. have to be careful i someone said the other day that um it's time to shut down the radio stations 
that play this music that is um, not putting our communities in a good light. And I just think we have to be careful with blaming radio for our circumstances or blaming television for our circumstances. Music does have a power and it can definitely help you know, situations. It is a freeing form of artistic expression. But I think that music, I think that television, I think that these art forms are a reflection of our society and our communities. And turning the radio off or turning the television off does not diminish the problems that we have. So I think yeah. we have to start addressing the problems and stop blaming, you know, everybody else. Yeah. And then I think, too, with our children, at least, I mean, I don't know how to address young people who may or may not be influenced by a parent. But with our children, we have to monitor what they're listening to. Okay. And when they do listen and when they're exposed, because this is the other thing, they're going to be exposed to what's going on in the world. We as adults, as parents, as those people in their lives need to be ready to have that conversation with them. Well, Trey. I think those conversations should be had before they hear it. I mean, yeah. we yeah. we know as adults what we see and hear on a daily basis. So are we really doing our children a service if we're pretending these things don't exist out here yeah. and waiting until they run into it to explain it? Or should yeah. we be proactive and let them know, listen, these are things that you're going to see. This is what life may or may not have in store. And this is not to scare you. It's to prepare you because trust and believe you can turn the radio off. You can turn the television off. You can monitor the cell phones. Your children are going to school. They're yeah. walking to the corner store. There are going to be places where they're going to see things and you cannot control it all. Yeah, you're so right. You, we're actually going to have a conversation about that next week on Wellness Wednesday, uh, how to talk to your children about, you know, challenging and difficult subjects. And I think parents don't know sometimes what to say or how early to even engage those conversations with their young people. So just like uh, this conversation in this show today is helping people to kind of wrap their heads around and recognize that music can be a, a form of healing, a form of relaxation, you know, a positive thing. Hopefully that show will do the same. Anything else you want to share about music as a healer, BZ, uh, before we wrap up? I mean, I just think in general music and um, everything else, we have to be intentional with what we expose ourselves to mm -hmm. and use um, the things that work for us. I've, I've been seeing a therapist for years now, and I mean, it is a gift from God to have a yeah. therapist that works with you. Um, but one thing that she said to me was, what makes you feel good? And during times where you're not feeling good, you need to tap into those things. So yeah. I will play music. I will sit outside in the sunshine and put on my favorite playlist. I like to create playlists, honey, because I don't want anything to pop up in my stream that I don't yeah. want to hear. So yeah. to food, I have a playlist that's titled Feel Good Music. So mm -hmm. I know the only thing I'm going to hear is the music that resonates with my soul. So that's yeah. what I would say. You know, just as a teenager in group home, we had relaxation therapy. And they would play this like jazz music. And I remember thinking then, this is so crazy and dumb. <laughs> like, I really didn't like it. Like, we're just laying here looking at each other, listening to music. But we all fell asleep during that time. And I thought we fell asleep because we were bored. The truth is, we were at rest yes. and it was a time for our minds to be calm and our spirits to relax. And it, it helped us. And I think grownups, you know, we could take something from that. Take a few minutes to put the phone down, to unplug from everything, mm -hmm. to put on some calming, relaxing music and just zone out. Like even if it's yeah. only for five minutes, it resets everything and we need that. Yeah. Oh my God, girl, you're so right. You're so right. And we do, as you said, we need to do it for our kids too. Before I leave, I do want to ask you, did you ever get a chance to tell DMX that the prayer on his CD really kind of started the change in your life? I did. When DMX <laughs> came um, to the township, I actually interviewed him prior to his show and told him that it, it was on my bucket list and always a dream of mine to actually pray with him. So mm. I hosted that concert. Um, shout out to Ben Hated, the promoter, and Keisha Martin for helping me to become the host of that that uh, concert. But yeah, so I was there hosting it. I was out on stage, and my coworker uh, Cadillac came up and was like, "You've got to come downstairs. DMX refuses to pray without you." 
So X prays before each one of his shows. And because he knew that it was something that was important to me, he refused to pray. I mean, had everybody downstairs in the hallway waiting on me. And um, I went downstairs and we all held hands in a circle and DMX prayed with myself and about, you know, maybe 20 other people that night before he went on stage. So full circle moment for me. Oh yeah, I know that had to be transformative for you and maybe even for him too. Well, prayerfully, I mean, DMX had a, a, a great impact on so many people. He was so much more than an artist. I truly believe that um, he was sent here by God to touch people that, you know, a lot of other people couldn't. Couldn't so, touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all have a purpose. We all have a purpose, which your, uh, what you may have thought at the time was a tumultuous start, made you the woman that you are today and make you stronger, wiser, and able to endure a lot. I believe that. I believe that. And I hope you do too. I know I'm here for a reason. God kept me through storms. <laughs> Beasy baby, you can uh, check her out on Kiss uh, weekdays from ten to two. Ten to one. Ten to one. <laughs> ten to one. Check her out in Columbia, South Carolina, on Kiss 103.1. Beasy, thank you so much for joining us today on Coping with COVID. We appreciate you. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Hey, thank you. Uh, Maxine says she's enjoying BZ on the radio and she gives up the pound signs. You can see my little um, my little three year old grandbaby was is home from school today because she was feeling a little sick. So we have company today on coping. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you have a story or initiative that could help someone cope or cope with COVID, please email booking at copingwithtraytaylor.com. If you have a product or service that could help someone cope with COVID, please email copingwithtraytaylor at gmail.com. We would love for you to be a proud sponsor, just like uh, In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council. They uh, sponsor Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. Our other sponsors include uh, Javis Tax Services, the Comet Bus System, Black Pages, Black Expo, also Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall, and Agape Counseling and Training Services. Uh, tomorrow, we are talking about, she just had to get in here. <laughs> tomorrow, we're talking to the folks with a Juneteenth, Auntie Fern said hi. Uh, we're talking to the folks with a Juneteenth. The Juneteenth Freedom Festival is uh, going on this weekend, and uh, they've got several events uh, going on already this week, and uh, they're going to talk to us about that tomorrow. And then Soda City Pharmacy is an African-American-owned and locally-owned pharmacy in Columbia, South Carolina, and we're going to talk with Dr. Tremaine Cooper, who is the pharmacist and also the uh, proprietor of that coming up on Friday. I want to say hi to uh, Mitchell Peace Joy Jen. She says, hugs to you. <laughs> and also for us to have a wonderful day. Hey, thank you, Mitchell. I met your son. I forgot to tell you, I met your son at Black Expo and he was a lovely young man himself. So listen, as always, we leave you with a reading from Jesus Calling. I think Izzy knocked my book down. So let me get it from here today. Hey, Izzy, do you want to say your prayer? You want to say your prayer to end up the show? Come on, come on up here. Come on, come, you can say your prayer. Come on, come on, come on up and you can say your prayer. Go ahead, say your prayer. Say it loud. Amen. 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 Thank you, Busy B. I appreciate you. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Until the next time, I wish you peace, abundant blessings. Take care. Stay well. God bless. And don't forget to wear your mask. Where you wear your mask, Izzy? At school. At school. <laughs> that too over your nose and under your chin see you guys later say bye bye, bye. <laughs>